That's better. I'm, you wanted to be in the can studio. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just let's. We see have we wonderful can. connection. <laughs> All right, I was telling everybody the things behind me are things that you've made. Um, most of this is all, I think all of this is Raku. Yeah. So um, let's start, though, with my question. Yeah. With um, Before we get into all the details, let's, um, I want to tell everybody, what is your story about becoming an artist? What is my what? What is your story about becoming an artist? You're like, breaking up. Okay. Um, did you turn on your Wi-Fi? Oh, my. <laughs> That's as close as I can get, I think. Okay. So tell us your story about becoming an artist. Well, back in 1970, a friend of mine... Uh, who had taken pottery lessons at Delta State moved back to Starkville. And he took me down in his basement and he said, I want to show you something. And he, he set it the wheel and took old mud looking ball of stuff and threw it on that wheel and made a pot. And it was like magic to me. I didn't know what had happened. And uh, he said, you try it. And so first time I tried, I threw a pot. Man, I was amazed. I couldn't believe it. But the next 500 times I tried, they all messed up. So you just call it <laughs> beginner's luck. But that's how I got started. It was just, it was something I couldn't put down. And like I said, that was 1970. So you so that's 50 years I've been making pots. Yeah. Do what now? That's been a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just a little while. Just a little while. <laughs> so but I love, I love doing it. It, uh, it, it, it. it helps me relax. It helps me get away from everything else. And, um, I like using my hands no matter what I'm doing. If it wasn't pots, it would be something else. I like, I make some jewelry. I've started doing that. Uh, I refinish and rebuild antique furniture. Anything to keep my hands busy is, is I love, but pottery is, is the number one. Uh, yeah. Well, you do. A, well, you do. A, yeah. Well, you know, I know that we've had some functional pottery in the gallery before because I, I have some of your mugs. My kids have your mugs. I've got some other pieces from you. But um, really, what you've been focusing on the last. Um, couple years is the Raku and doing more edgy kind of ceramic sculptures and such. And um, if you can just tell um, everybody a little bit more about these S houses and that wall sculpture. And then um, in a minute, I'll tell people about your wind chime because I love that. And I'll do a close up of that in just a minute. Okay. Um, some years back, I got a commission to do like a hundred platters and I, I needed a slab roller. So the, the, the person that gave me the commission paid for my slab roller. Uh, and so I made, I made the platters and everything went fine then. And I said, what else can I do with the slab roller? <laughs> well, make slabs, of course. <laughs> but I started, started making slabs and, and, Hurricane Katrina got in my head, and, and one reason, I, I went to high school in Bay St. Louis, and I, I couldn't get away from all the destruction and the, the craziness that that hurricane caused. And so that, that was inspiration for my S houses. Uh, yeah. Trying try to say the house can bend any direction and twist and get stuff blown off, but hopefully it won't blow down. Yeah. And that, that was kind of the inspiration. And, and uh, when I first started doing that with you, uh, I did what little small prayer houses. I don't know if 
those are all gone. I've got a few. Here. Yeah. Well, my wife has some. <laughs> oh, but, uh, went from those prayer houses to the crooked houses, and then I started making straight up and down houses. Uh, so then I, I went. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah, straight up and down right. like those. And then you don't have any any churches or mm -hmm. buildings mm -hmm. like that. And I started making those because of the uh, gallery I had in New Orleans. Wanted me to make uh, some churches and and some crypts that that yeah. are prominent in all of the, all the cemeteries in New Orleans. <laughs> and so those crypts went from crypts to churches, and, and that high, that evolved. And but I, I keep gyrating. They're coming back to the S houses. Yeah. Only th only thing I can say really is that Katrina had a profound effect on me but nothing compared to people that were actually in it. But, but mm -hmm. I have connections to, to the Gulf Coast. Yes. And, uh, yeah. it, it keeps reoccurring in some of my work. Some of the shields I did for you that I've got working on now will reflect that also. The, the, the curvature, the, the, the destruction force, but then everything comes back. Mm-hmm in a different way. Yeah. Well, you know, I have um, a couple of your shields and um, it has, yeah. it has, some Thank you. It, I love them. love them. It has some copper wire on it and it's got some metallic glazes on it and some carvings and some uh, cutouts. And it's just so interesting. And so I'm looking to forward to having some more because that piece right there on the wall is only, um, wall piece I have right now. Everything else is three-dimensional like these. And um, okay. and then I want to, while, while you answer my next question, I'm going to show a close-up of the wind chime because okay. I have it at my house and it has the best sound. I mean, it just, I mean, when that storm came through on Sunday afternoon, I was sitting um, in the in the kitchen and um, I could just hear it you know, dinging, and it sounds so nice and so peaceful, and it still, it's been through a couple of really high winds in Tupelo, and it's not gotten destroyed. It's still in great shape, really good shape. So tell us, good. <laughs> the next question that I want to answer for us is, how do you stay focused on creating your art with family distractions, like your grandchildren or your children or maybe your wife? But, so I'm going to show a close-up while you tell us about that. Well, my wife makes me stay on task, so she doesn't interfere that much except when I'm off task. But my studio is in my backyard, so all I have to do is walk 40 feet out there to it, shut the door and lock it, and nobody bothers me. Uh, my grandchildren, two, two granddaughters, will uh -oh, hope it didn't break. <laughs> I just had to make the noise. So everybody could hear it. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, my granddaughters uh, like coming out there, and they'll come out for a few minutes and play around, and I'll talk to them and try to show them stuff. And uh, then they get off track, and they want to come back in my house. So that, they don't yeah. really bother me unless I'm, I'm really pressed for time. And my shop's so small, I have stuff everywhere, on tables, uh, on top of the kill, everywhere. And that's when I, I get nervous when they come out there like that. But hopefully they've learned what they can touch and what they cannot touch. And I enjoy them out there, and I don't mind people coming and watching whatever I do. But I like turning my, my uh, Pandora on and run it through my stereo and shut the door, like I said, and, and just sit back and make pots and think about what I'm doing, but think about what it means to me, no matter what I'm making, even if it's a, a heaven forbid, an ashtray, which I, that's horrible, but I, hey. I try to put a part of me in whatever I'm doing. And, uh, it, it's just 
the way I feel about clay, about marks. That's what I like about clay. You can mark it with anything. And and the mark stays, it's permanent. And and you can over mark it, which I've done some, and, and but I like the marks on them too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope can that you... answered your question. <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's good. Can you tell them a little bit about um, your raku process? That um, is, you know, the raku process has been around for hundreds of years, I guess. That's probably there for maybe. Water... Can you tell us We're about that? Water... About what? The raku. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're having a little bit of delay. Uh, I did raku many years ago, okay. just just, uh, just trying it. And and since I've been with Karen Gallery, uh, a lot of those houses are raku. And again, it, it goes back to Katrina. It goes back to fire. It goes back to destruction. Yet, as you oh, okay. destruct, you construct. And and that's that's the, the what I'm trying to achieve is a t tension between those two. And, and, and any way I can express that, I I like to I try to express it. And Raku, I love yeah. fire to start with, so Raku is is right down, right down my alley, and, and my my big kill is gas, so it's fire too, and and love. Yeah using fire and the marks that it makes and, and right. trying to get it all to combine in an artful way, expressing what I want to express. Well, I want to show Sometimes you. Sometimes I have no idea what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's all right. I had that problem too. So this is, you know, a little bit closer up of the house and I want to shoot people the bottom of it because it it's black and it, um, it doesn't quite rub off. Right. It's, it's, definitely different and the raku is a little more fragile than typical stoneware and so you know yes. that's try to explain to people that you know it's it's safe on your side table but it's still you need to be careful with it you know it's not gonna it's just, it's just not like a bowl or a plate I mean it's gonna be a little more fragile but I love the crackling that it gives you see that on top I just think it's so interesting. And, and that copper glaze that, that's on there, can you see that? It, it's so neat. Go ahead. Any, uh, anywhere where I don't have glaze, when I put it in the reduction barrel for Raku, it'll come out black. And that's carbon uh, in the chamber where I put it. And what I do is put burnable material in a garbage can, put the, the red hot pot in on top of that and put the top on the garbage can. That kills the oxygen in there and the, the clay and the glazes are sucking all the oxygen out of the air. And that gives some of the colors, it gives some of the crackle in the glazes and it also makes black anywhere that has mm -hmm. does not have a glaze on it. That, that's, a, yeah. that's where all of that black comes from. Yeah. Well, I know that when you make a delivery, um, if it's raku, it usually is a little smoky in the gallery for <laughs> several days. <laughs> but it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, right. <laughs> so, uh, so my last question I have for you is, why do you do pottery and ceramics? Why have you not gone and done another career? Oh, I've had many careers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I've had many jobs, but my <laughs> career is 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 a frustrated artist. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Um, I've tried drawing. I've tried painting. Uh, and you have some of my jewelry, which I really like. Right. Uh, making uh, that and using copper. It's I'll, close enough to grab. I've, I've totally forgot to do that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's oh, I I could have I could have had some, but 
Uh, I think you have it all right now. <laughs> I do. Let me just turn around and show everybody real quick. So that is Pat's jewelry right there. It's kind of messy in here. I still haven't finished cleaning up and getting things in order. So, um, so there's, and I like the, how you make the copper and the silver together. And the prices are really good. I think they're really, really cool. So, so anyway. Okay, well, I know that you I'll, like I'll the Go ahead. Like to work with, like to work with what? I said, you know, it's very obvious, obvious that you like to work with your hands and create things with your hands three-dimensionally and not so much painting. I think that's definitely your avenue of total focus on, on that kind of creation. Exactly. Um, I wish I'd have taken art classes more uh, in college, but at the time I had, I was on the GI Bill and only have so many semesters you can take. And I had to go through and get a degree before my wife killed me. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's just, I've had to pick stuff up on the way. Basically, mm -hmm. pottery self-taught. Everything I've done, I've had one three-hour class at Mississippi State, and everything else is on my own. Uh, yeah. Read yeah. books, tried stuff. If it didn't work, I tried it again a different way. Uh, well, it's and it's I, also I just love the challenge. Well, and I also now. the you know pottery and glazing and firing that is more of a science. I had that conversation with David Johnson a couple of weeks ago, and you know you, I saw it. yeah you have all these expectations on what it's going to turn out, but when you go to fire it, it's just it may turn into something else. So. You just hope it doesn't break, right? That, that, that's true. That's all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, one glaze could work for me, and then uh, uh, another potter tried, and it come not even close. So it's it, it's uh, so many different factors in there. And to me, it's a surprise that I really like. Opening yeah. the kill, and you think you, uh, you'll come out with stuff you don't even know how you did it, even if I take notes sometimes. Yeah. But to me, that's the mystery of it. It's all a mystery, and and it's fun. That that's the main thing. I have fun doing it. Yeah. And well, I think you're. A fun I really appreciate too. what what <laughs> you've done for me. You you well, have helped me a whole lot, and uh, <laughs> your whole staff has. Yeah. Well, we love having you here at the gallery. You're fun, and you're always just coming up with new things to do, and um, really pushing outside the box of what. I would understand as a typical ceramist and sculptor and such. And so, um, and I, I don't know if people realize when I show the, um, the wind chime, you know, it's a, a fish head and a fish fin, the tail. And um, it's just so funny. And I just, it is great, but it has beautiful, precious sound. And it's crazy fun. And I just love it. I just love it. And it's just your personality. Totally your personality. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, no, it's hard to get any two. Well, I can't. I can't get any two to sound alike because they're different shapes, different sizes, uh, different thicknesses. And, and so you really don't know what kind of sounds you'll get. But I'm like you. I enjoy whatever comes out of them because it's, mm -hmm. it's so unique and uh, there are no two sets alike. And, and yeah. that's something else. I really like. Yeah, yeah. I think mine has a fish head too. And every time we're on the back porch, we just kind of laugh at it. And then it, then it plays. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it's great. So I've got one left. So if anybody wants it, they need to go on the website and grab that thing because it, it's free shipping. But it is the best sound and I just love it. And it's just fun. And if you have it under the eave of your house, it'll be safe. It, nothing will happen to it unless a bird flies into it or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, anyway. I, don't, I don't have too much trouble with breaking, even in, in like you said, the weather we've had uh, uh, this past Sunday. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say they don't break, but um, if it breaks, it'll break on the tail end, and then you still have a different sound coming from yeah. it. So it's uh, – but I've, I've – 
seldom have any that break. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, is there? That was all my questions. Is there anything else you want to tell everybody before we end our conversation? Uh, I've looked at a lot of the uh, people that that you've interviewed, and it's very interesting to listen to other people, to listen to why they do what they do, what's going through their mind, what what they can say with words. It's hard to express what's in your mind sometimes with words, but everyone that I've seen and watched impresses me and it inspires me also to mm -hmm. understand what they're trying to say, understand why they do what they're doing. And I don't want to be a mysterious person, which, you know, what you see is what you get. <laughs> and, and, but with, with me sitting here talking, it's giving me something else to think about. Uh, and watching the people that you've interviewed, it, it gives me a, another avenue to look at, to think about, to Mm -hmm. Maybe go down that road a while and see what comes out of it. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate all the people, every person that, that's that been on, on your interviews and, and other galleries, other, other artists. Yeah. Here, where I live, there are very few artists that, that will sit down and, and talk. Well, there are very few artists to start with. But yeah. I had three or four very good friends that were artists here in West Point, and I'm sad to say two of them have died. Three of them have died. And I could sit down and talk to them. And we understood each other because we were the same age, close to the same age, and had the same outlook on a lot of things. And, and so I miss those people. But to see and listen to somebody I've never met before or I've never really sat down and listen to what they have to say uh, to me that's interesting for, yeah. for what you've done and uh, well I, 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 just, I, I appreciate everything you've done for for art and me included but I mean for the world of art and all the people that work for you yeah all they've done to help promote art because to me I don't care if I sell a piece but if you sell one, that's good because that means more people are going to come in and look at your work and hopefully they'll see mine mm -hmm. and vice versa. The right. more the more people that, that know about art, the more people are going to be interested. The more people are going to maybe not necessarily buy it, but try to understand it. Yeah, yeah. Ask what is that person trying to express, even if it's a painting that's $5,000, which... I mean, I can't even think about that, but uh, <laughs> what is that person trying to say? And, yeah. and it gives your, it gives your brain a workout. Now, that, that's one thing I like about it. it. Yeah. It helps, it helps you mature as a person, as a, as a questioner. What are they doing? Why are they doing it? And right. then all of a sudden you'll ask yourself, why am I doing that house like that? Why is it, why is it S shaped? Why does that pot have a finger mark right there where it shouldn't be? Who knows? You know, yeah. ask me. I might tell you. I might say I don't have any idea. But it, it, it's the, the creative part that, to me, any anybody that uses their hands to express themselves, be a painter, uh, they can even use their toes. I, you know, we've seen artists that use have no hands and they use their toes, their feet, their mouth. That's special. It that, is. To me, it's special. Yeah. And, and yeah. I can admire any artist. I don't care what they paint. I may not be their number one fan, but hopefully I know why I don't like it. Yeah. Why, why I don't question as much. Yeah. Well, I think that's what is, um, I've, what I've enjoyed doing these interviews. This is, I guess, our third week, third week of doing them. And um, one, I have learned, you know, I thought I knew y'all and I kind of knew you, but I've, I've learned something about all of y'all. Um, I still think you're, you've got a funny sense of humor, 
but um, I've learned a lot about <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> and I've learned more about art, and also I know that during this time that we're all supposed to be sheltering in place, that this is yep. a time that I hope and pray that you will see some of these videos and have time to really start down some new creative paths. And so I cannot wait. I am so, so excited to see the new creations coming out of everyone's studios these, these weeks that were supposed to be, you know, sheltering in place and quarantined or whatever. So I can't wait to see it. It's going to be fun. So uh, I look forward to uh, look forward to any new art and, and welcome the challenge. Well, great, great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And even though we had a little bit of technical difficulties, I thought it was great. And thanks everyone for joining <laughs> us. And I'll post this, post this on uh, YouTube by the end of the day. And um, tomorrow is Shelby Lee Designs.